So on the Microsoft 365 Insider blog, a product manager posted that they were finally updating the default paste option for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, etc. Now, if you've used these programs at all in the last several years, decade or so, you'll know that when you copy and paste something from a website or another document, when you paste that text into the Word document, it will keep the original formatting of whatever you took that from. And I can assure you, and I think we all agree, that no one has ever wanted to keep the formatting from a website or document ever in the document that they're pasting that text into. Now, they did at one point update it so you actually could change, go in the options, you know, deep in the settings, you could change the, the, the default paste option to be merge with formatting, I think is what it's called. Now, anytime you open up Word or any of these other Microsoft programs, you should be able to hit Control V and the text that you paste will automatically merge with the formatting, no changes. Now the Insider blog is undated, but the article that I found is from today, which is May 14th, 2024. So I assume that this post was rather recent, but it does say at the bottom what version of Word that you need. So if you go into Word, assuming that you pay a subscription, you update it, you should get the most recent version. I did that, I updated it, and it worked for me. So now that's... That's fixed, but then again, you know, I already had changed the default option, so I was sort of already okay. But the other thing that I noticed when I opened up Word for the first time in a while is that when I went up to paste, the actually the set the, the set default paste option was actually set right there within the paste menu. That is new. I did not notice that before. Like I said before, you had to go to options, you know, file, options, advance. It was one of the settings that was very deep under there. So the fact that it's right there is very nice. I don't think I'll ever need it though. I'm never gonna change my default paste option. Now also in this blog post, the product manager also goes into detail about what each of the paste options are. And when I looked at that, I was like, you know what? Yeah, I've never really thought about what each of the options are. I just always went directly to merge with formatting or keep text only. And I didn't realize what the differences were between those two. I think I always just use keep text only, which I learned is actually pretty different from merge with formatting. So I thought, let's take a second and actually look through each of these different types of paste options and see what each one does. So first up, we have the most hated one because it was set to the default, which is keep source formatting. Now this one, let's say you copy an article, you copy the header, the title, you copy like the author's name, you copy the text, pictures as well. If you were to copy all of that, and paste it into a Word document, it should look exactly the same. It should be identical. That's what this setting does. It keeps all formatting and layout properties of the original source content, font color, spacing, bold, etc. Table properties is another big one. Now, obviously, if you're working on a Word document or something else and you use keep source formatting, it is going to change the formatting of your documents. You're gonna have two different uh, fonts, colors, sizes, shading, whatnot. Um, so it changes the formatting. So if you were to go down to what is now the default under these uh, under this update, it's merge formatting, which according to the blog post, this says that merge formatting keeps formatting from the original content that has meaning, bold, underlined, list and table structure, etc., but matches the formatting of the destination content before your cursor, font family, size, color, Etc. So even though it seems like everything's staying the same, Microsoft has sort of handpicked a couple of things that, well, if this person's copying this stuff over, they probably want to keep these certain things. Underline, that makes sense. Bold, I think that's a really good one to keep. Um, table structure, probably another good one. Um, so in the keep text only, this keeps just the text and removes items like bullets, table structures, and images. Pasted text will match the formatting of existing text before your cursor. That is exactly what I use. I, I'm trying to think of examples where I would have not used that, where I would have used the merge formatting. If I want to keep the font family size color the same as where I'm copying from, hmm, I don't think I really ever want to do that. So I think usually what I'm doing in my kind of work is I'm copying like articles into my notes. And so I just want the little tidbit or the part that I'm getting and I want to sort of merge it with what I'm doing, but I don't want it to stand out at all. So I typically, I don't, I typically don't need headers. I don't need titles. So if I do accidentally copy that, I tend to backspace it out. Yeah. You know, I would need more experience with merge formatting, just like 
consciously thinking about it as I use it, but I think I'll keep the default on my Microsoft programs to keep text only. Cause I mean, even like say you're in Excel, you just want the, the values. You don't want anything else. Um, PowerPoint, I'm trying to think what I copy in the PowerPoint. I copy images in the PowerPoint a lot, but that's that was already working with Control V. That didn't matter. Yeah, I, you know, I'm really curious to hear what you guys think or what you guys sort of paste into the Microsoft programs. Do you guys feel like you use keep text only all the time or merge, or merge formatting all the time? I think I'm going to keep mine set to keep text only. I don't think I have a reason to keep it too. Uh, merge formatting. I think I'd still find myself changing all those things to match my whatever it is I'm working on. Now, like I said, she gives the exact build of Microsoft that you need for this to take place. Now, I would ass I would assume if you're on like a school or a work Microsoft that this would be updated already. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you have to check with your tech department or manually update Word. If you're on a personal one, then it's like, well, how many of you actually have authentic Word or authentic Office products? I doubt that many of you are paying for the subscription, but I do wonder if you pay for the program outright, because Microsoft still gives you the option. If you want, you can buy the program outright. But what I don't know is how updates work. So that's something you have to sort of fill me in on because I do the subscription service. I, for years, had used a downloaded version of Office, and I thought that I was able to get like as recent as like 20, either 2010 or 2017. I know, that, I know that's a big gap, but I... I can't remember which one of those I got to work on my old computer. But then when I bought a new computer, I was trying to install Word that I'd used before. I wasn't able to get it to work. Um, so I downloaded it again. And I think the most recent version of Word I was able to get to work that I had downloaded um, was like 2007. And that doesn't work with all the cloud stuff. And I'm sort of integrated into that. So... And it just didn't have the features that I was used to at this point. So 2007 was not going to work. And I looked at the subscription options. And like this is like the first time I've looked at it with like having a paying job. So I was like, you know what? I mean, for six, I think it was like 60 some dollars a year. I think it went up because I'm now in my second year of, of subscription. I think it went up this year, maybe like one or two percent. Um, but it's like 60 some dollars, like somewhere between 65 and 70 dollars for the year. And you get um, all of the office products, Word, Excel. PowerPoint, OneNote. Um, those are the four I have installed. Um, you might get more than that, but that's at least I know that's what I have. And you know what? I have a YouTube channel. I write off a ton of expenses to that. And the office suite is just another expense that I write off. So really paying the $60 is not that big of a deal to me. Now for the Adobe products, that is a completely different story. And I think Adobe is the most notorious product line that is downloaded. So uh, it's very easy to install, easy to access. Um, like I said, the products, the way they structure the cost is completely different and way outrageous. Um, completely different story than Microsoft. I think Microsoft is being very fair. And I really do prefer Microsoft to like Google Docs or, or something like that because I like having it integrated with my desktop. You know, if you use Google, you're in the cloud you're using the browser-based version of everything. Nothing is saved locally, so if you don't have internet, you're really screwed. So I would much rather have the desktop set up, and I just like Word. Word has more functionality. It feels more official. I just like using that compared to the Google stuff. Although, on my phone, I will use the Google products, especially the Google Docs. I, that Google Docs is like my default notes app. You know, any, anytime I have to share something. So if I'm making something and I don't have to share it, I will use Google Drive. So that, that seems to be pretty common across all the products. Anytime someone has something they need to share, like an Excel doc or something, it's typically something that they make in the Google Drive and then they share it out. So if you downloaded the most recent version of Microsoft Office and you're able to get this update, or you have a more recent version of Office that you were able to download and install successfully that you, like I said, downloaded, I'd be curious to hear how that went for you because I was not able to get it to work. So I hope this was an interesting elaboration on these topics. Thank you for watching.